Baylor 21, Oklahoma State 16. Uh, running back Jalen Warren was out for this game. Quarterback Jerry Bohannon was out for this game. I think those two kind of washed each other out. You know, Blake, uh, how do you say his name? Shapin? He, Are you talking you know, about the run, uh, quarterback? No, the quarterback. quarterback. Uh, so, so I think like 23 out of 28, 180 yards, three touchdowns. What, what I, mean, I got play, from, I mean, he played almost the entire second half without being able to throw the football. Yeah. Like, he did you have, can look at the splits. I'm, I'm going to bet that like 25 of those 28 passes were all before he got hurt. He was 17. He had 17 straight completions yeah. in this game. Uh, no, ended up rolling. 23 out of 28. And obviously, you know, not right at some point. Uh, Baylor only had 242 yards of total offense. They only did. They only had four yards per play. So Jim Knowles' defense did what they were supposed to do in the second half. I it's, look Spencer Sanders. We've talked about him for years and whether or not he would be able to step up in a big, big situation. And he did it last week against Oklahoma. And this week, no touchdowns, four that interceptions. No Oklahoma Baylor, don't play defense. Now, agree. And this is Dave Aranda a second time around. I told you this was going to be a bloodbath for Oklahoma State to find a way into the end zone. No, you you were right. Uh, like, I didn't get a lot right this weekend, and that's fine. But this game, I knew oh, you and I didn't know how Baylor was going to perform. I didn't know that. I knew Oklahoma State wasn't going to score easily. Uh, you were you were dead on. Uh, the three touchdown drives by Baylor, by the way, three plays, eleven yards; three plays, thirty-seven yards; nine plays, forty-seven yards. All yeah. three short fields. All he trusted. He trusted his defense to yep. get the ball to take it away, and they did it. They did it over and over and over again. Yep. When they weren't taking the ball away, they were laying the lumber. This is the best defensive performance we saw all weekend. I, really, by both teams. Was impre- like, to be yeah, honest. What by Michigan both did was impressive, but they were playing an offense that just isn't good at football at all. Like, Agreed. Like, I think Michigan's really good. I'm not – this is not a takeaway on them. Holding Iowa to three. Mm. Not that's super surprising. About, that's that's more about you not letting them score a defensive touchdown because they didn't score offensive touchdowns a lot this year. No, you're 100% right. I mean, Wisconsin held them to seven points. So, uh, yeah. Oklahoma State had two field goals from the six-yard line, one from the three. They were stopped at the one-inch line. There were two fourth-quarter defensive stands inside the 10-yard line for Baylor. You know, Jim Knowles in that defense held Baylor scoreless in the second half. Uh, but, man. But they were one-dimensional. Like, we talked Incredibly about one-dimensional. Yes. They couldn't throw the football. Their quarterback was I found it strange that they would rather be their second string quarterback who can't throw over a third string score a third string quarterback that at least gives you a chance to throw the football. Now I don't know any I'm not gonna pretend to know anything about the third string quarterback. He he could literally just be a walk on dude that that's just not a quarterback. I mean that could be an emergency situation only. But up against Jim Knowles, up against this Oklahoma State defense. If you go one-dimensional, you have no chance. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. This, was, this wasn't this was super surprising, I don't guess, because we, <laughs> Gary Lewis jumped in, good Sanders, bad Sanders. Yeah, that's 100% what it is. 100% yeah. what it is. Yeah, but 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 if you look at all the times he was really good this year, they were against teams that just play trash defense. Yes. And any time he played a team, like this is not a he's a he's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing. This is a if he plays somebody that doesn't press him, he can pick you apart and he's got wheels good enough to 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 make some moves with his legs. If you bottle him up and and hit him a couple of times, it's over. Like, it's bad Sanders the rest of the day. My thought process on this, why I took Oklahoma State, was I thought that that defense was going to create opportunities and and maybe score themselves on Baylor, especially against the second-string quarterback that that uh, Jim Knowles already had film on, right? Like, we've seen this. They did it against Texas Tech. Texas Tech played lights out, beat up on Iowa State, who has a pretty good defense, but then as soon as you get film on them, Oklahoma State held them scoreless. Like, it did not let them move the ball at all. And no, I understand Texas Tech, way different than Baylor. I get that. But, oh, I, I just... I, I think this Baylor team is incredibly well coached. I hope they can keep that staff together. I really do. Yeah. I'd like to see yeah. Aranda do well there for a while. We got into this debate with some of our other buddies in a group tech we got. And those guys all hate Baylor. I understand that they, 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 have, they have different reasons for hating Baylor. I think Baylor might be the best job in the Big 12. It's it's possible. It's 100% possible. Uh, I'm going to tell Riggs you this, the second in. best job in the Big 12 is probably Houston now. 
I mean, Cincy might have something to say about that. At BYU think, is no, pretty no, good. They're not talking about where they are as a program, okay? Because if if Luke Fickle left Cincinnati, I don't know that Cincinnati stays what they are. I think they're good. I don't think they fall to the abyss. But I I think that is a product of they've hired really well and they've done a good job, but that's a Luke Fickle thing. I think Houston's great no matter who's the head coach because of the city, the resources, the recruiting talent around them. That – that's where it all comes from. I mean, I, I I see where you're coming from. I since if he Luke has had, and Dana Holgerson swap places, would you think Houston's a better job or Cincinnati's a better job? Man, yeah, uh, Houston's that's, that's Houston's the, probably that's the better the job. Question. Yeah, that's, Houston, that's that's the answer. There. Uh, overall, Houston the probably the better job. Cincinnati has had sustained success. The only coach that they did not hit on was Tommy Tuberville towards the end of his career, but they. I mean, they've had success with basically everybody that came through there. Like, since he's always been pretty damn good, you know, it's been a while since they've dominated a conference the way that they are right now, and that is definitely a fickle thing. But, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.